Hi, I'm Marm Kari. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Rheumatology. We're here at the British Society for Rheumatology meeting uh, 2019 with more than 2100 delegates and I'm here with Dr Edward Vital who is basically going to tell us a bit more about what he's done. He's just won a prize and he told he was telling us a bit about his transition from being a rheumatoid arthritis person to lupus. So tell me a bit about the presentation and the prize. So I talked, I, I suppose I started talking about that transition from rheumatoid to lupus and the reason I did it is because when I worked on rheumatoid I used to work with rituximab which was a new therapy at the time obviously we use it for all these other indications and some of the observations that I made just in our own clinic in uh, lupus patients treated with rituximab were very provocative. Um, the, the ways that people respond, the way they relapse and how long that takes and why that happens types of patients that got better, types of patients that got worse, they all prompted a lot of questions in my mind. Okay, and uh, so what would you t think that the take home message for when you write the what would write Michael Mason prize up is, you know, what's, what's it going to, what's, what's the take home message going to be to somebody reading the article? Is it going to be that B-cell therapy is, has got a future because the trials in lupus so far uh, haven't really shown anything or is it that you're your, your actual assessment of the disease will be different and you're so going to guide that because there are issues obviously with the biolag and the sleeve dye and all of the rest of the assessments of lupus and that's why the trials of rituximab didn't work very well. So I think B cell therapy, I feel no doubt that B cell therapies are useful yeah. um, and I think most people who have used rituximab for lupus do find it to be effective. Yeah. There is a question, first of all, about how do we even know whether drugs work or not in lupus. Um, in fact, you might say in lupus there's no shortage of targets and of potential mechanisms of action that have positive phase two data and probably do work. There's a problem with us knowing how to test and evaluate therapies, and part of what I spoke about today was about how we're going to make better clinical trial designs, thinking things more from first principles about how we evaluate um, different manifestations. Because, of, because um, lupus so far has been always renal and non-renal. Maybe we should have a third category, skin and joint. Yeah, well versus... essentially, when you, you know, when, when you take non-renal lupus trials, actually more than 90% of the people in the trial are only in that trial because of their skin and their joints. Yeah. And actually the evidence for any drug in any other manifestation of lupus is really based on quite small numbers. Um, now whether skin and joints should simply be lumped together is itself a bit questionable because actually I think there's, there are good reasons to think that mechanistically they may be a little bit different and some drugs that work better for one thing may work, may work worse for another. Yeah. So you're basically looking at not, you're going to re-evaluate how you assess the disease, how you do the tr trial design, but yeah. with the idea that B cells are going to be the answer to the treatment of lupus, or I with the open mind that it might be. I think B cell therapies are the answer to a lot of people's lupus, mm -hmm. but it's interesting where the limits of the effectiveness of B cell therapies are. And that's going to be what you're going to be doing. So we've seen some manifestations like certain types of skin lupus that don't seem to respond to B-cell therapies, or, or maybe they sometimes do, but they respond in an unpredictable way to B-cell therapies. And there we've seen other targets that might be used there, for example, anti-TNF can be very useful for some of those rituximab-resistant manifestations. And then, uh, when you, the uh, what rituximab also reveals, I suppose, is that however well it works, relapse always occurs. Mm. And that tells you something, that there's a disease memory somewhere that we're not getting at with rituximab, and the hope of curing disease does not seem to be achievable with B cell depletion, at least not with the agents that we have at the moment. And so I feel that looking at that situation or also looking at the situation of patients who are have not got lupus yet, but maybe at high risk of doing so, and tracking them through will reveal more about how how the disease starts, why it becomes irreversible at some point, and whether we can prevent that. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and hopefully we look forward to having this for the article. Thank you. Thanks.